Endow the king with your justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness. He will judge your people in righteousness, your inflicted ones with justice. The mountains will bring prosperity to the people, the hills the fruit of righteousness. He will defend the afflicted among the people and save the children of the needy. He will crush the oppressor. He will endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon through all generations. He will be like rain falling on a mown field, like showers watering the earth. In his days, the righteous will flourish. Prosperity will abound till the moon is no more. He will rule from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth. The desert tribes will bow, bow before him and his enemies will lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and of distant shores will bring tribute to him. The kings of Sheba and Seba will present his gifts, him gifts. All kings will bow down to him and all nations will serve him for he will deliver the needy who cry out. The afflicted who have no one to help, he will take pity on the weak and needy and save the needy from death. He will rescue them from oppression and violence for precious is their blood in his sight. Long may he live. May gold from Sheba be given to him. May people ever pray for him and bless him all day long. Second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, verse, uh, chap uh, chapter 2, verse 1 to 12, and it can be found on a, in the Church Bibles on page 966. <coughs> the Visit of the Meiji After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Meiji from the east came to Jerusalem and, said, and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's uh, chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them whether, she, whether Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means last among the rulers of Judea. For out of you will come a ruler who will be shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had happened, appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you found him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on the way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, where so they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened the tre uh, treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and on incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of the Lord.
May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Apart from your archdeacon, along with many churches and homes throughout the land, you welcome three new people this morning. Three expensively dressed persons carrying expensive looking gifts. Yesterday we are keeping Epiphany and we welcome three kings who have come to visit Jesus. These three have been on a long pilgrimage, a journey of religious devotion. They started out from their country when they saw a star suddenly appear. They didn't know where they were going or to what they were going. They just knew deep down inside them that they had to go. Pilgrimages are quite a common part of the parts time amongst religious people. People make pilgrimages to sacred places. Canterbury, Glastonbury, Walsingham, Santiago, and of course in this diocese people make pilgrimage to St Albans, especially on Easter Monday, but increasingly at Albantine, which this year will be on Saturday the 18th of June, and the procession will be spectacular. And then in 2017, after Easter, Liz and I are, plan, are planning to take another diocesan pilgrimage to the Holy Land. And we would welcome any of you who might want to come along with us. So details will be coming out shortly. Keep an, keep an eye out. Now, enough of commercials. Curiously enough, people often remark that they are unable to explain why they are making a pilgrimage. All they can say is that they had a deep-seated feeling that they must make it. And pilgrimages aren't necessarily m merely concerned with a goal. For whilst a goal may have been the reason for setting out in the first place, much is actually experienced along the way. Over the years, if truth be told, I have always found that the best part of Easter Monday is the walk itself, learning about one's fellow travelers, learning about oneself, learning about, one's God, about God as the miles pass by. It is this experience along the way that is so well described and documented by John Bunyan in Pilgrim's Progress. Christian experiencing so much as he journeys along. But of course the greatest pilgrimage that each and every one of us makes is the pilgrimage of life, and in our case our Christian pilgrimage. The first point I want to make from the Epiphany story is that whilst we may not always be certain of the goal to which we are heading, we shouldn't be over-worried by that, as the journey itself is so important. Life is about moving on, not standing still. Being a Christian is about continually learning, experiencing and developing our faith, and particularly our relationship with the living Christ. However, this journey is not carried out in isolation. Along the way, we have companions, our fellow Christians. It is vital that we love and care for each other, talk and share with each other, to learn from and give advice to each other. The journey is a vital and living process. And of course, it is by journeying together that our church is constantly renewed and developed. And it is this, in this sense of pilgrimage being a process of growing and developing our faith our church and our influence in society that is behind the Diocesan Living God's Love program. Some people say, what is the goal of Living God's Love? Well, to be truthful, there isn't so much a goal, an end, but rather there's three parts of Living God's Love that are a continuum. Firstly, the wish that people can go deeper into God, develop their understanding of the church, in, uh, of the Christian faith. And secondly, there's a desire to bring new people into the church. And then thirdly, there's the intention to transform both the, 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 for better the communities in which we live. The pilgrimage, then, is a vital learning process. Secondly, I want to consider from the Epiphany story is who or what are the wise men. Legend has it that one of the men was, a, was black, I think that is a very significant point. For you see, the wise men prove that the Christian message is for all people. Up to this moment, the Christ child had only been visited by very lowly people, poor shepherds and an artisan couple. 
probably Jewish at that. Then onto the scene come these very wealthy, learned people who are of different races, nationalities, and religions. And yet they had all come to worship the King of Kings, the Lord Jesus. Jesus is not exclusive to one type or class of person. The message of Christmas is for all people everywhere. How important it is then that our worshipping communities should not only be said to be, but actually be welcoming to anyone who enters one of our buildings, no matter who or what they are. Similarly, our care in the community and for the world at large should be all-embracing and not particular in any way. All people everywhere are sons and daughters of God. Thus, all people everywhere are our brothers and sisters and are all are welcome to respond to the God of love and kneel before the crib. The crib, indeed, is a focus for unity. Unity can and will come about between rulers and nations when all acknowledge that the justice of God is more important than national self-interest. Unity between people can and will come about when one realizes that God's love is for all, high or low. And unity within oneself can and will happen when one kneels before the Christ child. The importance of pilgrimage and the universal nature of the message are two important points of the epiphany. But what of the gifts of themselves, the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh? Well, gold, the king of all metals, was a fit gift for Jesus, for it says that though he may be a poor baby in a dirty stable, nonetheless he is the king of kings. We, too, offer him gold in the collection to enable his work to carry on here and now. Stewardship is a vital part of our Christian living. It is not an optional extra. Then frankincense, the sweet-smelling incense used in ancient temple worship and still used regularly in a number of our churches today. Incense is the supreme symbol of worship. As its smoke rises, so we are reminded of our prayer rising to God. Given by the wise men, it reminds us today that Jesus is God, to be worshipped and adored. And then lastly, myrrh. In ancient times, myrrh was the fragrant spice used in the preparation of those who have died for their burial. The gift of myrrh was a foretelling of the sacrifice Jesus was going to make on our behalf to enable all of us to be reconciled to God. Here in Bushmead, your pilgrimage journey continues in a new way when Glynn is inducted as your new vicar on the 1st of February. The 1st of February may seem like an end to a vacancy and a new beginning, but I think the story of the Magi tells us it is a continuing. With Glynn, I am asking all of you to work at the three strands of living God's love. Please work hard at going deeper into God. Make God a real and vital part of your everyday life. Do continue to make an impact on this community of Bushmead. There are no doubt people out there who want their lives to be transformed, and I believe you are the people who can do that. Lastly, again with Glenn's wisdom, experience, and ability, help people to become new disciples for that is what our Lord so earnestly desires. A happy epiphany to you all. Amen.